Hi, this is Kara Tierney from Monroe, Monroe Community College, and I bet you're pretty excited to learn more about Lewis structures, right? Now we're going to talk about something called isomers and resonance. These are two separate things, but they're both pretty short topics. So the first topic is isomers, and that's when you have two or more molecules that have the same molecular formula but different structures. Here are two isomers of the molecule C2H6O. And in order to show you the difference between these two, I'm actually going to be in this video. Hi! So uh, let me show you what the first structure looks like. So our first structure looks like this. In order to tell the difference between them, I want you to look at the central atoms. We have two carbons and an oxygen. The two carbons are in a row, and then the oxygen is on the end. If we look at the other structure, you're going to notice that the central atoms are in a different order. So we still have two carbons and an oxygen, but now the oxygen is in the middle of the two carbons. How we know that this, uh, this is an isomer and not just the, an equivalent structure is if we twist around these bonds. Now whenever you have a single bond, you can actually twist around that. I, no matter how much I twist this thing, I'm not going to get the other structure. I would actually have to break apart the bonds in order to form this guy. So in order to uh, know if you have isomers, you must have to break the bonds in order to go in between the two molecules. When we have that breaking of bonds, that's how we know we have isomers. Let, you, let me show you an example of when we have something that looks like isomers but aren't actually isomers. So CH2F2 does not have isomers. All structures are equivalent even though they look dissimilar from each other. And let me show you why. First I'm going to fix this structure. This bugs me when we don't have our lone pairs shown. And I'm sorry, uh, this pen isn't working like I want it to. There we go. So we have some crappy lone pairs drawn on there, but at least they're there. Okay, so hello again. Let me show you these structures. So our first structure has the green is the F's and the white are the H's. I'm showing you the first structure where the F's are on top of each other, top and bottom, and the H's are on either side of the molecule. If I wanted to form the second structure, then I would just, boop, turn it. Do you see how I'm getting the same structure now? How I have a different um, molecule, but it's actually the same uh, structure. I'm sorry there, I was just blanking out. Okay, so we're going from the first structure to the second structure. See how that's just a rotation? So that means that they're equivalent and not isomers. I didn't have to break any bonds. So our next topic is resonance, and this is when you have multiple valid Lewis structures that exist for a single molecule with the same skeleton, skeletal structure. So they're not isomers. They have the same order and structure. However, you have multiple bonds that can move. So resonance structures illustrate all possible structures. So what a resonance structure is, is you're actually going to draw each possible structure with a double arrow between them. Let me show you what I mean. So let's go to CO3 2 minus, which was something that we drew in the last video, and here is our structure that we came up with. Now you might have said to yourself, why can't I bond the C on the left side? And you definitely can. So let's draw that. So if we bond, we do our double bond on the left side. This is not an isomer because all the atoms are in the same places, right? But the double bond has moved. So we're going to draw our bracket and we draw a double arrow between them to show that they're resonance structures. There is a third resonance structure for this and I bet you already can spot it we have to draw the double bond on the bottom. So we're going to draw that and put our brackets and charge and a double arrow between them. Let me just put those together. Okay, so we have three resonance structures for CO3 2 minus. 
When we look at the next one that we did, BRF3, notice that there are no multiple bonds. When you only have single bonds, then you don't have to worry about resonance structures because there's no multiple bonds to move around. So BRF3 does not have resonance structures, and this was the only, would be the only one that you would draw. Now I want you to draw the resonance structures that may exist for SO2 and SCN-, the other two that we did in the video. I want you to decide first, do they have resonance structures? And then I want you to draw them with the double arrows between them. So please pause the video right now and draw those structures. And when you're done, press play. So SO2 has one resonance structure and that is if we move the double bond to the right side. SCN minus, as you already know, has three structures, and we actually drew those before. Uh, it doesn't matter what order you put them in, so I'm going to put my double bond for, my triple bond for N and my single bond for S, and then we just put double arrow in between them to show resonance. And now I'm going to do my triple bond with S and C, and a single bond for N, and double arrow. So these are the resonance structures for SO2 and SCN minus. Now resonance hybrids is the actual structure that is found in nature, and it's actually somewhere between all the structures where bond lengths are equal. So let's go to S. Uh, let's go to CO3 two minus. So what's happening is what this looks like is there's a double bond that's moving boop, boop, boop from one oxygen to another. Now double bonds are shorter than single bonds, so it would actually it seem like it might just shorten up every time your double bond hits an O. However, in nature, what actually is going on is that double bond isn't moving. It's actually what we call delocalized. This bond is actually somewhere between a single bond and a double bond. So if we look at our bond lengths for a CO with a single bond and a C double bonded to O has a bond that's shorter than the C uh, single bonded to O. In that CO3 structure, the bond length is somewhere between 1.23 and 1.43. And actually how we would draw that is, you might see this in another textbook. We are not going to be using this model in our class, but I want you to be aware of it because I like this because it's a little closer to what actually is happening. These three bonds are actually equivalent, and they're somewhere between a single bond and a double bond, so we put a single bond with little dots. In my class, though, I want you to uh, put all three structures with a uh, double bond between them, but know that the actual structure is a hybrid and is somewhere between all of those structures. So uh, in our next video, we're going to learn about how to tell which resonance structures are going to contribute the most to this resonance hybrid. And you will do that by calculating something called a formal charge. So go ahead and go watch that last video before class, and I will see you in that video.